Sheila exhorts Deacon to rise and shine and brags about how well cared for they are as roomies when she visits him at his home. Roomies? groans Deacon. It wasn't a dream, thank God. Sheila laughs. She remarks, You were all into it, as she recalls how much they had to celebrate the previous evening. Deacon pours the last of his whiskey into a coffee mug and tells her that this roommate arrangement isn't going to work out while she serves breakfast. Steffi can't stop kissing and making passionate love to Finn at the cliff house. In the living room, they make out and kiss, and he picks her up. Taylor enters and offers to go. Finn reassure her that she is welcome to remain because they have the rest of their life to spend together. Taylor expresses how wonderful it is for him to be spending time with Douglas at Eric's and asks if Steffi has heard from Thomas. Ridge and Eric ask Douglas if he's enjoying himself at the Forrester estate. The young child enjoys being with his dad and is overjoyed to have spent the night with him. Eric inquires as Thomas dismisses him to the screening area as to how long he and Douglas will be remaining. If it's okay, Thomas would want to stay for a short time. He wonders how Donna would feel if he and Douglas moved in. Eric reassures him that everything will be all right, but he doubts Hope will be happy. Thomas wants to avoid hurting Hope and is making an effort to be considerate. Brooke discovers at the cabin that Hope has not yet heard from Thomas. She might need to contact Ridge. Douglas must return home. Although Hope doesn't want her to call Ridge, Brooke tells her daughter that Steffi and Taylor are attacking them. Taylor. Finn and Steffi discuss his experience with Sheila at the cliff home, and he reveals how he took advantage of her feelings to hurt her. Taylor thinks that's quite clever. After gushing about Steffi, Finn kisses her. According to Taylor, their family is coming together, and it's a very happy time for them. All that's left to do is transport Douglas to his house. Hope at the cabin agrees with Brooke that this is Douglas' house and says she'll phone to check in because she doesn't want a conflict to get out of hand. Hope makes a call to Thomas. Thomas answers Hope's call at the Forrester mansion and informs her that Douglas is watching the Dodgers game in the screening room, and they had a lovely night. While out running errands, she offers to bring up the youngster, but Thomas tells that Eric wants to have a family, meal early, and has invited Douglas to stay. Hope had assumed he would already be at home. Thomas informs her that his son is enjoying himself and wants to stay. Later, he will call. Hope gasps at the cabin as Thomas cuts off their connection. What happened? Brooke queries. As soon as she finds out about the supper, she is shocked that Thomas wouldn't let her daughter to pick up Douglas. Sheila notes that she cooks and cleans for Deacon at his home. He thanks her for it, but warns her that he can't hang around with known convicts. Will she jeopardize their freedoms? Deacon believes that she ought to make a beeline for the door and flee as far away from Los Angeles as she can. Although Sheila is good, she respects his care. Deacon brings up their yesterday close encounter with his parole officer. The same as she always does, Sheila took care of it. She didn't go through the ordeal of amputating her own toe just to end up back in jail for a careless error. Deacon believes it's better if she departs and will act as if he never saw her. I'm not going anywhere, says Sheila. Thomas, Ridge, and Eric are enthusiastic about having the family together at the Forrester estate. Donna and Pam are out shopping, and Eric says they'll be back in time for supper. The party is here. Taylor exclaims as she bursts through the door with Finn, Steffi, Kelly, and Hayes. After relating the good evening he had with his father to his grandma, Douglas leaves with Kelly. All of this seemed ideal to Eric. His last name might be Finnegan, but he's so close to being a forester at the moment that he can't believe they're seeing Finn again. Sheila and Deacon discuss Sheila shooting Steffi and Finn in his house. She adamantly denies being insane or crazy. She hacked off her own toe, he says and he emphasizes that she shouldn't be there because it's harmful for them both. She must vanish permanently this time if she wants to be free. Deacon had never encountered anyone quite like her. He acknowledges that they have wonderful chemistry in bed and ads, but they're not. Deacon phones Hope and tells Sheila to be quiet. Deacon claims he's dealing with something unexpected, and they'll get together soon despite Hope's request to hang out. 
Deacon reconnects and is more eager than ever to get rid of Sheila, but she calms him down by reminding him of her resources, including money and something else he can't get enough of. He will also be eliminated. Sheila threatens him if he blows the whistle on her. If I get locked up, you get locked up. Taylor comments on Ridge's smile as they sit at the Forrester estate. His family helps him feel good, which makes him happy. What else makes me feel wonderful, you ask? You. Nearby, Eric expresses to Finn his happiness at Steffi finding a man that welcomes him home and loves her so immensely. Thomas informs the group that Kelly is being tutored by Douglas on a puzzle. As a toast begins to form, Ridge expresses his happiness at being with them all. This year has not been easy. Rich recalls the miracle and declares he won't ever forget that day. He informs Finn that whether he likes it or not, he is a member of them. Cheers. Each of them raises a pair of glasses. Steffi approaches Finn next and praises him for being excellent. Never will she consider him a given. Everyone celebrates once more as they kiss and declare their love.